Organ transplants save lives. I'm alive because of you. Many of us have decided to donate our organs when we die. But we can also be living donors. You have my heart. What organs can we donate while still alive? I donated my other kidney. And how much of ourselves can we give to others? I give you everything I have. This is your body on organ transplants. Let's be real. If you were to donate all of your organs, you wouldn't survive. But which organs could you live without? I don't need those. Liver. Liver transplants from living donors are common. You can donate part of your liver and remain relatively healthy. But there can be complications. As with all transplants, you'll have to undergo testing first to confirm your health and the compatibility of your organs. You'll have to stay in the hospital for about a week post-surgery, and you'll be more tired than usual. Oh yeah, we're exhausted. After six weeks, your liver will be back to its regular size and you can return to work. Yes. You can start eating as you usually would, but it'll be more than six months before you can have alcohol. Not tonight. Lung. Another live organ donor transplant is the lung. Lung efficiency, 50% better. During surgery, doctors will remove the lower part of one of your lungs. This will permanently reduce your lung capacity by about 20%. You shouldn't notice this unless you're very athletic and you'll be giving another person the chance to breathe again. There are risks and even successfully donating a portion of a lung can have complications for the donor. Like what? These include internal bleeding, incision infection, blood clots and pneumonia. Not too low bar pneumonia at 31. Kidney. You can donate one of your kidneys and live a healthy life. You'll be in pain for the first week and it will take at least a month before you start to feel like yourself again. I feel, I feel great. You could suffer from high blood pressure, anxiety and depression. And it's best if you don't play contact sports to avoid injury. Your remaining kidney will increase in size to compensate. but the extra strain could lead to abnormal protein levels in your urine and reduced kidney function. 70% kidney failure. Pancreas. The pancreas controls your sugar levels by making digestive enzymes that break down the food you eat. Transplants are usually performed on those with progressive and unmanageable type 1 diabetes. Over 72% of all pancreas transplants occur as combined pancreas kidney surgeries. Although most pancreas transplants involve whole organs from deceased individuals, it is possible for a living donation of a pancreas segment. That seems rather risky, Doctor. Possible post-donation complications include inflammation, hernia, nausea, vomiting, and the development of diabetes in rare cases. Heart. One of the most dramatic transplant surgeries is the heart. The heart. A heart transplant recipient is usually on death's door and in desperate need of a transplant. It's a complicated procedure that can dramatically save a life. Take my heart and you put it in Mike. Donating your heart? would result in the most conclusive of complications, you'd be dead. But not completely dead. Your heart would live on in another body. Pretty cool. That was super cool. Eyes. While whole eyes can't be transplanted, the cornea can. It's the second most common transplant after blood donation. 
and has been done since the late 1800s. Live donation of the cornea is not performed except in very rare circumstances. How rare is it? Exceptions can be made if you have lost vision in one of your eyes or you no longer see daylight. Or if you have an ocular tumor removed in the back of your eye, the cornea, if healthy, could be used for transplantation. Skin. Your body's largest organ is your skin and it's one of the most common types of tissue transplanted. If you donate skin while you are alive, it would be after a tummy tuck or another procedure that removes healthy skin from your body. Skin transplants can help burn victims, hernia repair, and skin reconstruction after mastectomy. Face. The first full-face transplant was performed in 2010. All face transplants have been from deceased donors. They've provided recipients with a chance of a normal life. And with recent advances, a patient has a chance to regain almost full facial function. I can't say thanks enough to those people, what they did once they gave me. Brain. A brain transplant would be an extremely complicated operation. A brain transplant? Yes, a brain transplant. If it were possible, transplanting your brain wouldn't do much for the recipient. Need a new body, though? That would be so great! Well, that might be where it could help. After all, would this still be you? He's Mitch. I'm Mitch. Somehow we switch bodies. That's and Dave. I'm Dave. But this is science fiction right now, but it could be possible one day. One day. Head. If brain transplants were possible, what about an entire head? Sure, why not? An Italian neurosurgeon, Sergio Canavero, has vowed to one day oversee the transfer of a healthy head onto another body. In 2017, Canavero claimed he successfully performed a head transplant on a cadaver in an 18-hour operation. Despite his assertion, this procedure is nowhere near a reality for living donors. Shocking. While this might work for Dr. Frankenstein's creation, it's hard to say if it would succeed in reality. Only one way to find out. Okay, now that you've survived transplantation, Let's find out what extreme surgical makeovers you could undergo on another episode of Your Body On. <laughs>